Go on, Sam. Ask Rosie for a dance. Go on. <laughs> Big one, big one. Huh? Oh, oh, There's been a dragon in these parts for a thousand years. I regret to announce this is the end. That montage just kind of gives you an idea of a, a lot of the little things that were changed in the film. And in fact, one that kind of wasn't uh, looking back at it, just because I felt like I had to put it in there. And that would be, in my opinion, the fireworks. The fireworks are really close to what Tolkien wrote. The dragon, the spears going over the water with the hissing sound. Um, I think he said he says fireworks turns into birds, I want to say. And in, in here it's more right. like guys. Um, But yeah, he kept he, it really close. He has a whole paragraph describing the different fireworks. Um, there's a uh it's you know i really liked actually the way the it, and it makes sense if you think about it right because you have uh, you have a movie and what works best in a movie is visuals and so fire mm -hmm. fireworks being mm -hmm. highly visual um and audio i guess so they they really did a good job um and there are a couple other places they did a good job so maybe we can break it down and just yeah. go through real quick the party in the film versus the party in the books and so so the part in general I, I i have to say off the top jackson did a pretty good job um and there were there are a number of uh, elements that i think you'll see that were were missing and i think would have made a fantastic addition to the movie so we could talk a little bit about that but but essentially, here's the way it works in the film. And I'm, by the way, just to be clear, I'm going to say there's two elements I'm going to add at the end that were in the extended edition, but we're not, and we're not generally talking about the extended edition. But I thought they were funny. So, um, in the film, it's uh, we have the element of the general merriment of and basically the party scenes themselves, and uh, it it takes place out on the green underneath the big party tree. We lack a lot of the tents. There are some tents set up, but. Um, Notably in the books, there's a tent over the entire tree. There's a there's a tent that's so massive it it covers the entire party tree, and that's where the private party with Bilbo's speech is had in this in the movie. He gives the speech to everybody, yeah. um, but in the books he gives the speech just to the 144 close family members. <laughs> <laughs> here's the here's the quote directly from the book about the party tree. Uh, Tolkien wrote, "There was a specially large pavilion so big that the tree that grew in the field was right inside it." and stood proudly near one end at the head of the chief table. So right. there were chief tables. It was much more of a, a whole setup rather than right, just... Right, right. Random... It, it and by the way, the, the party in the book was an all-day affair. It, had, it covered three meals, lunch, afternoon tea, and supper. And so and in the, in the movie, it's just at night. Um, the movie uh, has the scene with Sam and Rosie where we're, we're given a little more tidbits about, you know, Sam's, and I think it's a whole setup for the, for the arc with Sam over the books, which, uh, which Tolkien uh, has almost nothing about and yeah. Jackson wanted to put more in. Um, is it, it's quite likely that Rosie was in fact at the party because almost everyone in Hobbiton was at the party. So that's, and, and most people from the Shire, many people from the Shire, they're probably over a thousand guests total. Um, maybe more. Um, and so, so anyway, we have Sam and Rosie as an addition in the films. Gandalf and his fireworks, very well done. Um, uh, he, he, he shows off his fireworks for the children at one point in the movie. And then of course, there's the fireworks over the water with the dragon and the dragon, as Jonathan mentioned, is almost exactly the way it's portrayed in the book. Um, although in the book, there's, it starts, the dragon starts at the lonely mountain. Like there's a firework of building up black smoke lonely mountain and then the fire the dragon comes out of the lonely mountain yeah, yeah. smoke which is pretty cool um in the in the movie uh um bilbo uh, tells hobbit tales um tales from the hobbit about the trolls to the children and uh, jonathan didn't have a clip about that but it was in it was in the the movie edition he's telling the story and there's just some super cute kids uh hobbit kids um that are there uh it doesn't specifically say that in the book but um but Bilbo is greeting everyone all day long, and he's also and he's giving presents. So one of the things the movie left and out entirely, which I thought was mm. was sad, mm -hmm. was 
the Hobbit tradition of giving presents. So Bilbo actually spends basically most of the day until the separate greeting every single guest that comes through the special white gate that they've made for the for the party. Um, they've done they do massive landscaping, and he gives everyone a get a gift. And it, it says specifically that the children spent most of the afternoon just playing with their toys and the, that were gifts, of which many were clearly magical. And we in the book we are also told that dwarves came before well before in the weeks before the party and brought carts of stuff, probably these magical toys and other gifts from the Lonely Mountain and and, and uh, probably some of Gandalf's fireworks and stuff. Um, in the in the movie, we have uh, we have uh, the speech, which uh, everything in the speech in the movie, if everything is word for word from the books. Now, the book speech is longer. He says more things, but everything that is in the, that 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 uh, the movie has is in the books, including the the famous scene with um, well, not the famous, but this quirky scene with uh, the patriarch of the Proudfoot clan. Um, and uh, who has his feet up on the table and set, yells a proud feet when, when Bilbo yeah. is, is it, which actually exactly happened as Tolkien described it in the book. So well done to Jackson on that one. Um, and then uh, um, in the movie, in the extended edition, doesn't have it in the theatrical, um, we have him dodging the Sackville Bagginses and talking to Frodo and almost telling Frodo about the fact that he's going away. Now, what's funny about that, even though I like the extended edition in general, is that that highlights another difference with the book. Because in the book, there was no, the Frodo was in on it. He knew what Bilbo was going to do. Mm -hmm. Gandalf mm -hmm. was in on it. He knew what Bilbo was going to do. So they both knew what was going to happen. And so the extended edition with Bilbo almost telling Frodo that he's going away, but not doing so while they're dodging Sackville Baggins is, um, would have never happened in the book at all. And then there's one line from the extended edition, which I found hilarious because um, it, it touched my heart, um, where um, Bilbo is greeting people as, um, as they enter the party, and he and he uh, makes a comment about productive brace girdles. He talks to a, a, a hobbit mother and says, are all these yours? My, you've been productive. No, that's, which, yeah. which, which, which I thought was hilarious because, of course, that reminded me of my family. <laughs> yes, we are. We, we You're are very indeed, productive. We are indeed productive. <laughs> So other differences, um, the, the uh, universal gift giving, the mount, okay, the dwarves, I think I covered most of them. So three meals um, instead of four. And then the, the party itself, party within the party, that's the big deal. Is that the, where Bill gives the speech and all the stuff with, the, with his family happens inside of the massive tent right under the tree, while the rest of Hobbiton is basically outside at the bigger party. So yeah. most of the hobbits don't actually hear his speech, just his family and relations hear his speech. Also yeah, hear, all the they hear about it. Uh, but the other, I mean, the other additional change uh, that I, it, it's an addition is Merry and Pippin at the party, right? Correct. Yeah, and we already so, talked about that in our, yeah. one of our previous books, you know, the addition of Merry and Pippin. It was in fact, somewhat likely that they could have been there. Um, well, it's likely that Frodo's um, Brandy Buck relations were probably invited, but of yeah. course, Pippin would have been 10 years old at that point. Um, right. So, so they would not have looked the way they looked. And that, that goes to the 17 year gap as well, where Jackson just yeah. doesn't have the 17 year gap, which we'll talk about later. Um, yeah. One final change, Gandalf being in on um, Bilbo's plan um, gives the Hobbit something to talk about for years, as he says, by creating a blinding flash when Bilbo disappears. So it isn't awkward the way it is in the movie where all the hobbits are like, yeah, he literally just disappeared in front of our eyes, um, yeah. which which would be, but there's a blinding flash from Gandalf and then Bilbo has gone, which, you know, could, could um, first of all, the blame goes I, on Gandalf for that. And all, and, and she's, he's running cover for, for Bilbo in the books um, in that regard. I, I found that uh, honestly, kind of the weirdest part of the, of all the changes made to the party. Oh, was yeah. that there was no flash. I was expecting something and for him to just disappear and for Gandalf to his face kind of goes like, like boom, almost like he's saying pow or something like that. Like his lips make this little, and it's yeah. almost like they filmed it with the idea that he was going to do something, but then decided oh, to remove it. And so that one, the first time I saw that, I was like, Oh, he was supposed to do something, but they decided not to. That was, and I can't get that out of my head. And so the idea that, he just disappears without it. I like I like the blinding flash of light because it adds a little bit more, you know, the queer things happening with with Bilbo and it's more than just even just disappearing. There's there's a little bit of magic. And uh, my, that was my least favorite part of the changes to yeah. to the party. The rest of it is mostly cosmetic and the rest of it has to do with it being a cinematic, you know, and we'll talk about the 17 years that they lopped off for the film. But, uh, you know, you, you had to, you wanted to introduce 
the characters, their relationships uh, as early as possible without it being, you know, overwhelming, like here's everybody, but here's, you know, here's the characters of Mary and Pippin. How do we introduce them as sort of the comic relief for the films? Well, make them the comic relief for the, for those 30 seconds. In the, right. Introducing in the them trailer. in general, like they, yeah. like, like this is our introduction to Mary and Pippin. Exactly. Yeah. Instead yeah. of, instead of being on the road. So, right. Right. So, um, I mean, and then, you know, the, the other change is uh, that, that we kind of locked or, or, or stuck onto this whole idea of the party changes is how Frodo or how Bilbo leaves in the sense that he just drops the ring down. He just plops it on the floor and then Frodo comes in and, and finds it. But, but before that, uh, Bilbo just leaves. He just, he, he, he just leaves with it on the floor and doesn't hand off it, hand it to Gandalf or anything like that, or Gandalf doesn't save it. And, and granted, I think it makes the struggle more real because that same struggle he did have in the books uh, when it comes to, you know, he did not want to leave the, uh, it was still in his pocket. He didn't want to leave the um, the envelope. Um, yeah, and, all, uh, most of that happens aside from Gandalf's reaction, where Gandalf, you know, basically says, "You think you probably think you're quite clever, or something like that." Yeah, something that yeah, effect, yeah. which he never says in the books, because of course, in the books, he's in on in on it. Instead, they discuss the blinding flash in the books, and Bill always complains about the blinding flash. Actually, unlike unlike Jonathan, so, so yeah. <clears throat> there's a um, there's I think there's a cinema, like you're saying, Jonathan Jackson is trying to like putting a lot of uh content into a few minutes which mm -hmm. he kind of mm -hmm. has to do throughout mm -hmm. this because he's trying to get everything in and so he uses that opportunity to show sort of the malicious or um uh, at least you know sort of foretelling of the the doom element of the ring uh yeah. You know, just giving that sense of foreboding about the ring by having it hit the ground like a, you know, with far greater weight than it would have. Right. And and the whispering of the ring, which we've talked about before, and we actually like the whispering. We, mm -hmm. we, like that's there was so there's a lot of things happening, but the general um, conversation between Gandalf and Bilbo is exactly like it is in the book. Um, the book, of course, again has more than than the movie does, but yeah. but it, but most of that element, uh, most of the elements of Gandalf talking to Bilbo are exactly from the book. Yeah. I mean, even, even Bilbo drops the envelope on the floor and then yep. but Gandalf picks it up. But in the film, he decides not to pick it up because he sees the eye for a split second and right. Doesn't, right. Know. And that, and that leads, and that actually deals with our 17 year jump, which we'll, yeah. so we'll talk, we'll talk more about that. Okay. So let's, 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 let's get into our questions then. Is it lore friendly? And I want to say this idea of of the Shire for Jackson is the thing that he loved. I think he loved doing the Shire more than anything else. I mean, what they, they grew the, the Shire for two years, I think it was or a year and a half, something like that. They actually went to the location, built it, and then let everything grow where they needed it to grow in order to actually have a lived in set, which is, uh, which was genius, yep. which was genius and made it look good. And so this party, the introduction to the hobbits, to hobbit culture, to hobbits. I mean, we had a little bit of the, you know, the, the, the prosaic introduction, but this introduction, where they're interacting, where we get to know the characters, right? It, it, you could still feel like there's, I don't know, he he certainly understood Hobbits more than any other characters, I would say, in the books, and that comes through in how it's portrayed. Right. All right, so the party, is it lore-friendly? Or the changes. We're Are the changes, talking, yes. We're specifically talking about the changes, so right? The changes being the party tree, the, the tent around the party tree, uh, some of the changes to Bilbo's uh, speech and being removed with Merry and Pippin there, with uh, Bilbo talking to the kids, right? All that sort of, with, with removing the um, uh, giving of the gifts, with not having Frodo's birthday there, which isn't really something we talked about much, but we'll talk about more in the extended podcast. Uh, all that sort of stuff, does it make it lore friendly? I'm having a hard time with this one. Well, so so I, I what I did in this question, I, I mean, I, I'm gonna, I'll tell you my answer. My answer is yes, it is lore friendly. Here's why. Um, he's doing, so the, he wants to introduce the characters to us in a way um and the mary and pippin friendship with each other is a lore friendly element he's mm -hmm. he's introducing it in a way he's inventing something to mm -hmm. to shoehorn it in so he doesn't have to take up more screen time on the road um and so i understand why he's doing it it's not lore unfriendly it's yeah. it's um sam and rosie same thing mm -hmm. um sam and rosie are clearly they have some sort of relationship they aren't isn't like they sam comes back and immediately gets married randomly um so so there there's going to be some attraction at least um and probably a kind of relationship that's lore friendly the dodging the sacral baggins is is lore friendly um mm -hmm. the um uh 
you know, the, the various elements, um, slight differences in the, you know, now the leaving out is the biggest part that I was like, okay, struggling with that leaving out the birthday. Is that lore friendly? Well, no, that part isn't technically lore friendly. Technically when you miss out on, on something like that, it's not lore friendly, but overall the changes in the party were not lore and against the lore. They were, they were in line with the lore of Tolkien they yeah. just weren't as good as they could have been. I think, for example, having mountains of letters, showing a shot of, with mountains of letters in the post office yeah, right, of, at right. Hobbiton would have been awesome. Like mm -hmm. you, you could um, having uh, uh, Frodo's relationship, like Ham Hamfast Gamgee's uh, discussion in the Ivy uh, Ivy Bush in yeah. before, with with uh, the Miller and sit with Sandy Man and and a couple of the other Hobbits, you know, explaining how Frodo's an orphan. I thought that could have been cool if you, they had done that extended edition, even you know a minute and a half of that. I'm um, telling, telling. There's a lot of things oh, you, they left out, um, but I don't think it's lore unfriendly. So in the end, I land on yet yeah, it yeah. was lore friendly. It wasn't. It wasn't lore unfriendly. It yeah. was just shortened. I think um, there's an easier argument to be made that when you simply leave something out, that's more lore friendly than adding something new in. Right. Right. So. Omission is more lo lo lore friendly than addition. That's um, true. And, and though, you know, you could say there were letters that went out. They just didn't have time to show all the letters that went out there. You could have said, you know, it, it, uh, maybe we just remove the parts that weren't Frodo's birthday. It didn't say they didn't. It would have been lore unfriendly, for instance, to say explicitly this was not Bill B Frodo's birthday or it was a small event. Right. That would have been lore unfriendly, but they didn't even address that. So, yeah, I'm going to go with you and say it was lore friendly. Um, and you know, some of the other changes about, you know, Mary and Pippin's age, uh, particularly Pippin, that's, I guess, lore unfriendly, but we already addressed that in another one. So I'm not, yeah, but, worry yeah about we're not talking about that specifically. We're talking about the overall. And in the end, when you have a, when yeah. we're talking about an overall subject with a number of changes, we have to make a judgment in general is, will yep. we, does it fall on the side of lore friendly more or lore more unfriendly? All right. So next one, does the change make for better cinema? Uh, I think this one's pretty easy. I, I think I think yes, it does. You don't want a, a big, giant, long extend. If I can make my Y capital here, that'd be great. Um, uh, I, uh, yeah, introducing the characters, I think there was necessary for cinema. I don't think I think you want to know who they are right away, and yeah, that there's a relationship there. It, it creates a fellowship more immediately. Um, it bookends uh, Sam and Rosie from the beginning to the end, and. Um, and I think that's that's something that uh, is the Sam and Rosie scene in the the theatrical edition. I think so. It's been a long time since I've it watched. It is. Just the yes. Theatrical no. Okay. I I made a so, point because I only watched the extended edition, so I made a point mm. of hunting down the theatrical edition just to <laughs> watch. Uh, yeah. What, because I want to make. I wanna so make I think. Sure. Yeah, Sam and Rosie is in the theatrical edition. Yeah, I think um, there they could have done things that would have been made for uh, better long form television, perhaps if we we had more hours to do this. But yeah. I think for cinema, I think it worked incredibly well. And I'll go back to the, like the Shire is the best part of both the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Yeah. Obviously, the Hobbit, but I think even the Lord of the Rings, the Shire is the best part. No disagreement. I'm also a yes for the same reasons. All right. All right. Next one then. How much do you like change? Now this is an interesting one. I you know. Some of the changes I I like if you're looking at them from a change perspective, eh, I don't actually like them that much because I would have rather them not leave out a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But since it's a cinema, it's a movie, do I like the changes? I, I don't really I don't really <laughs> like the changes. Um, but they're but they're not I it's funny, it's a funny you know situation because we given our three questions. I'm going to score this one a little low as far as the changes because I think it was just missed opportunities. That's why I'm going to give it a lower score. Hmm. Um, but I, I, I still stand by my earlier answers that I don't think it's lore unfriendly. I think mm -hmm. it's fairly lore friendly. And I also think it makes for better cinema. But I don't like the changes. So, so, um, for, so, me, so yeah, for me, I'm going to give it a 2.3. 2.3, wow. That is lower than I expected. Because because there's so much they could have no. Like the birthday presents thing, that would have been awesome. And like yeah. showing the kids playing with these little magical birthday gifts, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. So cool. 
and uh you know the mountains of invitations as i mentioned before and having three meals like they could have done a cut scene where like show it shows bilbo at the front greeting people in the morning and then it, it's you do you do the time last laps of over the afternoon and just boom, and, and, and you, know, <laughs> like you see you see the hobbits like a partying and they keep partying and more right. partying and more food comes in and then you know five and seconds wasn't there later. and like they could have wasn't there uh some hobbits who went back through the gate again to get a second yes to get a second, yeah. a second so, like even that round of gifts like i could see this um you know if this were a, uh an episodic series uh on on tv or on streaming now uh where the, it ends with frodo saying goodbye and disappearing and then boom then we're, we get into the next episode like that so you can imagine you have a whole hour or 45 minutes in order to spend on hobbiton and the party yeah and, and, and you great. could do a lot of that a lot of stuff that wasn't technically in the book and show like what would have happened and what would have been going on during that time um in which would have been pretty cool um, so, so. Them, yeah i you know um so you know in other words you could have done the ham fast conversation yes. at the ivy bush right. at could the party been. where he's right. telling stories to mm. people about bilbo's like you see you could have done more book stuff and then you could have had more inter- you could have got we could have gotten to know and dislike ted sandy man a little more we yeah. could have we, you know there could be a lot of of course in a in a in a movie series in a television series we would end up with a scouring of the shire so we'd want to know about the sandy man uh, uh the sandy man family etc but anyway this is all nerd stuff so <laughs> where do i want to rank this um, I'm actually going to go higher than you on this because it doesn't bother me as much as other changes. And that's part of uh, how I rank things right now is that Got it. I think of like the the visceral reaction that I, I had to say Arwen coming and saving Aragorn. I just, oh yeah, like, we haven't got there yet. You know, things like that. And so this here, sure, I didn't like that there was no bright flash when Frodo disappeared or Bilbo disappeared. Um, I didn't like that Gandalf saw the eye when he went picked up, when he went to go pick up the ring. Um, but it didn't, bother me like other changes did so yeah. i'm gonna go 3.1 i'm okay with it uh, i think he there's a he he performed he he showed us the shire so well that um i think you're, you're, you're being merciful on the changes all right i, I, am. I accept I, that i am i am i um as a whole I, I, and he got i mean he did so much where it was so close to what was actually written in the books with the fireworks and with bilbo's speech yep. um that i i giving him some love there too. I agree. 